from Mr. Grant. Please be seated. I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our fall 2022 Fire Academy graduation. My name is Rob Willits. I am a full-time faculty member here and one of the lead instructors uh, for our academies. Uh, I'm a, I instruct for the Knight Academy, as well as fire science degree classes here. <clears throat> we, we, we really enjoy everyone being here. Thanks for coming out to see your loved ones today. Uh, I just want to take a couple minutes to make sure that we recognize some of the people that really uh, help make our program uh, successful and make our program go. Um, I'd like to thank our board of trustees who gives us a lot of uh, financial and administrative support. Uh, definitely want to thank our, our administration, uh, Dr. Rothmer, Dr. Bornstein for their help. Uh, our new dean, uh, Dr. Susan Moreland is in the back. Dr. Moreland, thank you for all your support for what you do for us. Uh, Randy, uh, I'm going to talk about Randy Southern in just a second. John McDougall is our Fire Academy Director. Uh, John has delegated me to handle some of his duties today because uh, he's got a, got a little uh, scratchy throat, issues with his uh, voice, so he felt like I would be able to speak better. I don't know, you guys can judge that later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so John is going to be doing those things. I would like to take a minute and just recognize uh, Randy Souther. He's in the back where he really likes to be. Please at least uh, raise your hand, stand up. I'd like to give Randy a big round of applause. <laughs> Randy is the uh, director of the Public Safety Institute, so Criminal Justice, Police Academy, Fire Academy, Fire Science, paramedic, EMT, all of the EMS programs here, uh, and has been for many years at Ames. Uh, Randy has decided to take his well-earned, I will say, retirement uh, at the end of January. We are going to miss him dearly, but I wanted to recognize him today because uh, he has meant so much to this program behind the scenes that we cannot say it enough. So <clears throat> that's all that I can really say about Randy because he's still my boss. <laughs> and he doesn't like that attention. So <clears throat> um, I also want to introduce uh, some of our academy instructors who are here today. Uh, Mr. Rito Gallardo, he's an engineer with Greeley Fire Department. Shane Elder. He's an engineer with Wellington Fire. Engineer Tyler Cheshire is with um, Loveland Fire. Uh, engineer Gallardo and Cheshire both lead the night academies, or uh, I'm sorry, the daytime academy, um, and have done a great job. Uh, Shane Elder is here to help us out. Uh, he's helped us out with the academies day and night throughout semesters. <clears throat> Also want to recognize if we have any uh, current or former 
fire service members, please stand up. We'd love to give you a hand. Any law enforcement members in the crowd? Thank you for your service. <laughs> Paramedic EMT that we haven't already seen. And any uh, current or ex-military, thank you for your service. We'd like to recognize that. I'd like to also uh, thank the person who made a lot of the behind the scenes possible refreshments um, during and after our ceremony. Uh, did a whole lot to just help set this up, uh, Mr. Brian Mix, wherever Brian is. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, Jump right into it. Um, we have a guest speaker today that we're really excited about. Uh, Battalion Chief Andrew Kiken has served in the Colorado Fire Service since 2000. He completed the Fire Academy and Associates of Fire Science program from Ames Community College prior to earning a BS in fire administration and enrolling in graduate school. He is currently assigned to training at the Berthoud Fire Protection District. Chief Kiken has instructed at Ames Community College, at fire departments around the country, and at the National Fire Academy. Everyone, please welcome uh, Chief Kiken up. Would you like this? I think I probably should. We yeah. talked about that before, didn't we? No. But it's uh, easy, just clips on, and that can go in your pocket. We didn't really plan this out, so give me a second to figure this out here. How's that audio level? Is that working for you guys? I'm, I'm thrilled that you all are here. I'm really here to talk to our, uh, our new graduates today. I'm excited about this opportunity. Um, I also went to the Ames Fire Academy uh, many years ago. Randy Souther in the back there was uh, open, welcomed me with open arms into the fire service. He was one of my first uh, contacts I made as I came here. I recently had an opportunity to meet with some of the people I graduated from from my academy. Uh, we all met up in Keystone and we had an opportunity to reminisce and I can tell you the relationships that you guys have forged during this time can truly span a career. So, uh, you know, as you shake hands here today and go on your separate ways, remember you'll cross paths with all these people once again, so don't be jerks to them. Um, you'll, you will meet again. It's a small, small world. Congratulations on this accomplishment. This will probably be the first of many if you all pursue a career in the fire services. Uh, never forget the fundamentals that you learned uh, during this time. The fundamentals are going to be the building blocks for all advanced tactics. So the little things that you guys learned, you'll just continue to build on. So uh, keep those fresh in your mind. Edward Croker, chief of the fire department of New York around the year 1900, is often quoted as saying, I have no ambition in this world but one, and that is to be a firefighter. The position may, in the eyes of some, appear to be a lowly one, but those who know the work of a firefighter believe it is a noble calling. Our proudest moment is to save lives. Under the impulse of such thoughts, the nobility of the occupation thrills us and stimulates us to deeds of daring, even supreme sacrifice. And we'll train our entire career for the possibility of those moments. And even if you don't ever get the opportunity to make that rescue, to make that grab, know that the privilege that you're earning today, being given an opportunity to impact people on the darkest moments of their lives, is a privilege like no other. And no matter where your career takes you and what you do, you will never have to wonder whether or not you made a difference in this world. I'm going to try and share effectively, hopefully, five pieces of advice with you that I've learned during my time. Number one, your education has just begun. You must train for the hazards that you know and educate yourself for the ones that you don't. Number two, spend your time wisely. You cannot get more of it. Number three, master yourself. Discipline creates freedom. Number four, watch your mouth and behave. And number five, 
don't let your daughter date a firefighter. <laughs> My daughter's right here. You should see the look she's giving me right now. Your education begins today. It has been passed down as folklore throughout history that in ancient times, a powerful Eastern king sent a decree out to all of his wise men to bring him a statement that was universally true, a statement that could apply to anybody and be true in any circumstance. After some time, they reportedly brought him the now colloquial statement, this too shall pass. Universally true. The reality is that the only thing constant in this world is change. Joy and sadness, success and failure, it will all come and go. Success is fleeting. Today's cutting edge technology will be tomorrow's antiques. Now you have invested heavily in learning skills, knowledge and abilities during the course of your academy that have given you a really strong picture of the fire service as it is today. But this too shall change, this will pass. Consider your investment as the cost of admission to get in that door. You must now let that information go, just as you would surrender your ticket to admission and get yourselves into the game. You're gonna build on what you learned, never forgetting where you came from and your fundamentals, but constantly seek new experiences. This job is ever changing. Global pandemics, mass shootings, the threats today are different than they were before. That is why we train. We train for the hazards that we know we will face. Fires, rescues, medical emergencies. These things have predictable patterns. And if we have a predictable pattern, we can create a predictable plan to deal with them. But a plan is just that. And as Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. So you must do more to equip yourself. You must seek education and knowledge for those things that you cannot anticipate. Global pandemics, disasters, a devastating personal loss of a loved one, or the unthinkable line of duty death. My time in the fire service has taught me that the biggest threat was the one I didn't understand. So educate yourself so you can stand your feet and adapt if you do get hit in the mouth. When the structure reacts to fire in a way you've not seen before, or when the lo world loses its head to an unknown medical threat and logic, science, and reason seem to be irrelevant. If you suddenly struggle with the effects of a career spent dealing with the trauma and tragedy that we have sworn to endure, you must educate yourself constantly. Train for the known, educate for the unknown. Number two, spend your time wisely. Your time is the most valuable commodity you have and you can't get more of it. You will trade your time in exchange to your employer for resources with which you hope to enjoy the time you have left but your time is finite. Fortunately, this job can bless you with time. I had the incredible opportunity, because of this career, to spend 20 days a month with my daughter as she grew up. Summer shenanigans, building things in the garage, reading to her and then being read to by her. Those times are so precious. And that is a blessing you get because of this job. But more than ever, our society's distractions are fighting for your attention. Unprecedented value has been placed on your time. Businesses are desperate for it. So much so that because of the incessant, fast-paced barrage of information from social media and information industries, psychologists in 2022 tell us you have three seconds to gain someone's attention and only 10 seconds to communicate your message before you are no longer relevant. We are constantly bombarded for attacks on our time. Now the technology is not to blame. For the first time in history, we have the entire information of uh, education and science, history, medical information, all that at our fingertips. We've never had access to this before. It's searchable and immediately accessible to all. But honestly, most of us use it for watching videos of cats or people dancing with their cats or people being triggered by people dancing with their cats. It's an incredible resource. But know that if you use technology as a tool, it is a tool that also uses you. Be curious, read, learn but aggressively defend your time against attacks. You cannot get more time. Number three, master yourself. Where you spend your time and your money will usually give you a pretty good idea of what has a grip on you. Make sure that those things align with your faith and your values. Master those things, master yourself, and learn self-discipline. Although it seems counterintuitive, discipline creates freedom, not the inverse. 
Freedom means not being enslaved by anything in your life. And sadly, addictions, dependencies, and unhealthy coping mechanisms have become accepted as part of the lifestyle in the high stress jobs of the medical profession, firefighting, law enforcement, and the military. Your generation of firefighters can be the one to change that. Learn about emotional intelligence, seek counseling regularly before you need it, and take care of yourself. Your mo mental health is as important as your physical health. The two are actually dependent upon each other. Number four, watch your mouth and behave yourself. From this day forward, you are no longer just some guy or some girl. You are a firefighter. You are now Firefighter Maxwell. The newspaper headlines won't read, some guy did something stupid. They'll read, Firefighter Maxwell did something stupid and messed up his entire life. Sorry to pick on you, Connor. You're the only one up here that I know. <laughs> but you now represent something much bigger than you. You represent hundreds of years of tradition and selfless service that has earned the public's trust and esteem. Don't mess this up. The things you say have a way of catching back up to you. As I mentioned, the fire service is a small, small world. At some point, you will find that your future will be affected by a comment made far away by someone you br knew only briefly. Make sure that comment is the right comment. Good or bad, your attitude, your words, your actions can spread like wildfire. So watch what you say and do. A reputation is a really hard thing to change. Your speech, attitude, and actions are one of the very few things in this world that you actually have control over. And number five, don't let your kid date a firefighter. If you have children, they'll likely grow up in the firehouse, heavily influenced by their honorary aunts and uncles that you spend one third of your life with. I see my daughter's here right now. She's, she's videotaping this on her phone, so um, I'm gonna be accountable for everything I say. But she grew up in our firehouse. She learned how to take and make a pretty good joke. Uh, as time went on, I learned that she had developed a delightfully odd sense of humor. They're very impacted by these things. And then there's gonna come a time where your kid is the same age as a new probies coming into the firehouse. And like me, you may issue the very stern warning to your firefighters, stay away from my daughter. And later, if it becomes necessary, the same warning to your daughter, stay away from my firefighters. But if you have raised them well, they'll think for themselves. And they may realize that firefighters have seen firsthand the realities of this harsh world. Firefighters see the frailty and the uncertainty of life, and it changes the way they handle relationships. Firefighters don't take anything unimportant too seriously, and they can always find the light side of any situation. Your child may have learned during their time in the firehouse that the greatest people on this earth are those who place others before them. And perhaps in some ironic Shakespearean Romeo and Juliet forbidden love sort of twist, your child may be drawn to one of these unique people. And if that happens, you can just claim it was your idea all along. We are protectors. And maybe no one will be good enough for our kids. But the more I think about it, given who you are and the traits you have, maybe there's nobody better for our kids than firefighters. You have chosen to answer a great and noble calling. I hope you have a long career with the distinct privilege of saving a life. At the very little, you will, very least, you will impact a life. There is no greater calling. Enjoy the fire service, have fun, leave it better than you found it, and behave yourselves. Thank you. my mic. Kind of wondered about that. There you go, sir. Thank you. Hold on a sec. Uh, part of our tradition in the fire service is uh, uh, the tradition of challenge coins. And uh, <clears throat> that's something that's pretty near and dear to us. Our, our academy uh, recruits really learned about that for the fire service today before we got started with the ceremony, but uh, I also wanted to, to do that for Chief Kiken uh, because awesome. 
great words. Thank you so much. Um, our challenge coin represents and has, contains our values, um, our service, uh, those things that we hold dearest. And most of those things uh, go hand in hand with everyone in the fire service. But it's one of those things that we, we like to present. So, Chief, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's talk about a day in the life of Fire Academy. Day in the Fire Academy typically follows this course. I gotta get my glasses, sorry. Students are expected to, to arrive a minimum of 15 minutes prior to the start of class. They set up their PPE, their bunker gear, their SCBA pack. They set it up for parade ready, which we have some set out in the bays uh, that you can see some of that. But every attention of, to detail is set to it so that they all look uniform, they're all ready to go. When we're ready to go, they're standing behind their bunker gear at attention to start the academy. From the start, the need for focus, detail, and professionalism is set. Students will have an overview of the day, post colors, participate in the subject lecture for the day, or proceed directly into skills, depending on the day. Lectures range from history of the fire service, building construction, fire behavior, fire attack, water supply, hose management, on and on and on. Prior to their work on the drill ground, students participate in physical training or PT, as we like to call it. PT is meant to get them warmed up and is relatively short as every minute counts during our class periods. After PT, students start to learn and practice the foundational skills of firefighting. They started the semester learning about their bunker gear and SCBA, then skills such as search and rescue, forcible entry, raising ladders, use of power equipment and saws, hoses, water supply, fire attack. Took a long time to get to that fire attack, didn't it? That's okay, you can say it, All right? Sounds pretty fun, right? Here's the reality. Students here today were pushed often to their physical and mental limits. In the short amount of time that we have with them, we try to get make every minute count, every second count. All had to work through claustrophobia, maybe fear of heights, uh, physical challenges, nagging injuries. None of you guys had any of those going on, right? There is, was always some new demand, and we try to push the threshold so that we are learning something new all the time. Getting mastery of skills is a pressing matter. We put them in stressful situations. We put them into tight situations. We want to add that stress because there is no way to really prepare you for the job that you are taking on without trying to get you into a little bit of that situation. And we try to mimic that as much as possible. They were pushed to their limits, both physically and mentally, and learned how to push beyond. All of these students earned their place at this ceremony through determination, grit, and just straight up hard work. For the students, you made it. Good job. Let's celebrate that. Just remember, your training has only just begun. Stay hungry for knowledge. Stay humble in your service. Take care of each other. 
and always remember that there is no such thing as a routine call. For each academy, they put, uh, they put together a slideshow that we always present at the uh, graduation ceremony. Um, the two academies have a presentation for you today uh, to show you what they've gone through for the last 15 weeks. to play with fire. Fire. I've always liked to play with fire. 
to go ahead and graduate Day Academy, giving them their uh, certificates. Thanks, Chief. Day Academy, go ahead and stand. Alec Budig. Mason Chavez. Ethan Florio. Connor Maxwell. <laughs> Benjamin Myers. Next. Troy Orabana. Foster Orr. Gavin Schreiber. Noah Stewart. Joseph Stritsky. Now get in there, come on. <laughs> Kazen Vogley. <laughs> I, I have no speech, Chief. Can we give a... Can we give our Day Academy graduates a big, big hand?
so now we're going to do our Knight Academy uh, video and then uh, certificates for those guys. I won't make you read these. I guess. All right. Night Academy. Hayden Chadwick. Thanks. Good job, man. Good job. Proud of you. Cass Cure. Good job, bud. Luke Zarnecki. Good job, bud. Liam Gately. Good job. Good job. Proud of you. Jake Peterson. Good job. Good job, man. Capenna Spring. Good work. Good work, my brother. Matt Zellabor. Good job, man. Proud of you. Just hang up here for a minute. So with every academy, uh, we, give, um, we give some awards. There are three awards. Oh, you guys be seated. Sorry. <laughs> or maybe I should make you stand. I don't know. For every academy, we give uh, three awards. I want to just introduce uh, uh, each award, and then we'll give those for each academy. Um, and I'm going to make these guys stand up here awkwardly while I do that because they deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our first award is the uh, Academic Award. Uh, 
Um, we present this for academic excellence, and each academy candidates are held to a high standard of excellence. Whereas in most academic endeavors, students must earn a 70% or higher to pass, in Fire Academy, that standard is elevated to 80%. This increase in expectation is because in fire and emergency services, there is no room for average, no room for simply getting by. Each firefighter, EMT, and paramedic is expected to perform at the highest level every day they put on the uniform. There's no room for a margin of error because simply put, their decisions have life and death ramifications for themselves, for their team, and for those they are sworn to protect. In the academy, there's an expectation that students will invest two to three hours outside of class to be successful. That equates to a weekly commitment of over 30 hours just to the academy. This is on top of facing all of life's usual demands with family, full-time jobs, and all the other obligations that we face. Each candidate you see before you today is here because they performed above the standard, they excelled in the pursuit of excellence. You, who are their families and friends, <clears throat> excuse me, seated here today, should know that these, these individuals, and as a team, had to face their fears and self-imposed limits, and then muster the courage and strength to push past them. They had to go places their mind and bodies didn't think was possible, and on top of all that, they had to study for the exams. They had to make tremendous sacrifice in that pursuit and face what I am sure at, at the time seemed like impossible choices. Because of this, they are all worthy of recognition and they inspire all of us to never settle for the status quo. With this award, we're gonna start with the Day Academy. The academic award for this uh, academy goes to Noah Stewart. The academic award for the Knight Academy goes to Liam Gately. Good job, man. Good job. The next award is the Top Rung Award. This award is given to the student who took a leadership service, uh, leadership and service role for their teammates. The students select this award recipient for the team member who was a high performer, motivated, caring, and who was a mentor and a leader. These students have had to learn how to work together, live together, and become a family. They've endured intense training for 15 weeks and learned a lot about each other. As such, this award should bring special meaning to the recipient. Selection for any award that is awarded by one's peers is a great honor and in many ways can be more significant than any other achievement. The top rung award is elected by the Academy themselves for that one person who really stood out for them. For the Day Academy, the top rung award for uh, fall 2022 goes to Alec Budig. Good job. For the Knight Academy, that award goes to Jacob Peterson. The 
The last award we confer to each academy is for leadership. Leadership is not dependent on rank or title, but rather on character and heart. It means having, having the heart and character to put the needs of others above self. It means committing to a life of serving rather than being served. In the face, in the fire and emergency service, leadership is not an option. It is an expectation at every level of every organization. When called to serve in someone in their greatest time of need, those who call us do not recognize our intricate system of bugles and bars that we use to identify rank. They see the uniform they expect a leader, they expect a problem solver. This award's namesake uh, exemplified the character and heart of leadership. David Goodale was, a, was an engineer with Loveland Fire Department and an instructor here at Ames. He set himself to a life of serving our firefighters through a passion for learning and training. He believed that to be a great firefighter, you needed to possess physical ability, common sense, experience, and the knowledge and wisdom gained from education. As a fire academy instructor at Ames, Dave established standards of excellence that are, that are instilled in our instructors and students today. We name this award in his honor because of not only his passion for the job, but because of how he lived that passion in his daily life. That was a life that was cut short on April 22, 1989. The semester's academy recipients were selected by their lead instructors with input from all of the assistant instructors because of their demonstrated leadership from the first day and throughout the academy. For the Day Academy, the Goodell Leadership Award goes to Noah Stewart. For the Knight Academy, the Goodell Leadership Award goes to Luke Zarnecki. I'd like to have uh, all of our Academy graduates stand. One last time, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming, your support for these uh, Academy graduates. We have some refreshments over here. Please join us in uh, having some of those refreshments and uh, celebrating this with your graduate. And thank you all very much for coming.